Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we are looking at University Games Rubik's Battle card game. This is from 2017, aimed at ages 7 and up, 2 to 6 players. Now this is an interesting variation on the Rubik's Cube in card form. Inside we're going to have 60 Rubik's Battle cards and instructions. So there's not a lot to it, should be easy to determine if all the cards are there if you find it used. If you're getting it new, well, you're going to see what you got. So let's open this up. The plastic is pretty good. University Games has been kind of hit and miss for me. So hopefully this one will be a good one. But we shall see. It does come in a tin. I have heard that there are versions of this in cardboard boxes, but I've never seen one. I've only seen these metal tins. It retails for around 10 bucks, I think. So, uh, that's really all there is to it. It's just this big brick of cards. It's got a little cardboard insert in the tin. Nothing too spectacular there. This one was inspected by number 103, apparently. So let's get the tin out of the way. It's pretty nice, actually. Pretty good quality tin. And you can see the nice colors on it. Spectre number. But the cardboard piece, uh, it's actually pretty thick, but it could get wet or destroyed. So be aware of that, because the cards are kind of a weird square shape that don't really fit in the tin otherwise. So they, if the cardboard's not there, they are going to slide around a lot and probably get the edges dinged up. Because they're not rounded edges, unfortunately. I would have put the edges rounded, but what do I know? I have not played this game, so I cannot attest to the quality of the gameplay. I can only review what I'm seeing of the quality of the components. Alright. So, we've got our instruction cards here, which is kind of lazy. They just put them on cards. But... It's probably better quality than they would have been on the instruction sheets. Because usually the instruction sheets they give you from University Games are garbage. So, your instructions are on f these cards. There's two cards, and they're both double-sided. So this is one of four, and then two of four, and then three of four, and on the back is four. So there's not actually four cards, it's just four sides. So you'll need both of these if you've never played before. If you only have one, you're not going to know how to fully play the game. So the game ends when one player has collected all of the Rubik's Battle cards. So, yeah. I haven't read this yet, so I don't know how to actually play this one. But we're going to just take a look at the cards so you have kind of an idea of what to expect. Now they are just laid out like Rubik's puzzles. And they are different. Each card should be unique, so you don't want to shuffle decks together, I don't think, unless you, have, you know, are watching a video like this that tells you what cards belong in a single deck, because eventually you'll probably have to sort them out. Uh, these are very glossy cards, so they will slide around. They're not terribly thick. So they probably are going to get torn or crumpled fairly easily. And the coating on these is mostly on the back. Uh, the, the front side here doesn't have a lot of coating. So uh, they're probably going to get torn up pretty easily.
Ooh, that one's all scuffed up and ugly. Look at that. Brand new card, already filthy. Yeah, the cards do have, um, because it is cheap coating on here, they do have kind of a, almost a dirty feel where it feels like your hands are getting dirty from playing with them. So I can feel that already. If you're a very tactile oriented person, you're probably not going to like the way they feel on your hand. Yeah, you can see how these, there's like some printing errors where it's kind of filthy. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but it looks like there's dirt on here. It's a brand new game. And finally, there we go. Now that is all the cards. Uh, primarily, you're going to want to make sure that the instructions are there. I think this is going to be one of those games where you really need to make sure all of the cards are here. And there are only 60 of them plus the two instruction cards. So you could probably flip through and, and count them real quick. But I don't think you're going to want to have any missing pieces for this one. I think this is definitely one that you want to make sure everything is accounted for. It probably won't be very fun if you're even missing one or two. It could really make the difference in the game. But that is Rubik's Battle Cards. Uh, the Rubik's Battle Card game, it looks okay. I don't think I'd want to pay more than $5 for it. Just because the quality is not that great, I don't think it'd be worth more than 5 or 6 bucks. But I tend to be very, very picky about my games because games tend to be very expensive. And you want to pick a quality game that you can play with your friends and families. <clears throat> now, as, excuse me, as far as party games go, this is probably fine. It's for two to six players. I don't think you're going to be able to play more than a couple games. Kids would probably enjoy this more than adults. It's ages seven and up, so you could probably play this with most kids fairly easily. But I don't think this would be a terribly great party game for adults. You'll probably have a few normies that'll be really into it, but diehard gamers are not going to find this nearly as entertaining or as challenging as some of the more intellectual games. So if you're diehard gamers, this is probably not for you. If you're just a normal person that likes to play the occasional board game, it'll probably be okay. But I think you're going to have to have a specific crowd for this. People that like Rubik's cards and games. Uh, if you really like Rubik's Cube, this probably be a good party game. But beyond that, I don't think this is going to be for everyone. So give it a shot, but I won't pay more than five or six bucks for it. So the tin is pretty nice though. I'll give them credit for that. At least you'll have a neat little tin if nothing else. But that's just my opinion on this one. Uh, from what I've seen so far of the game. We'll do a playthrough on how to play at some point in the future. But until then, that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Be sure and hit like and subscribe. It helps us out and you won't miss an episode then. And make sure to ring the bell for notifications if you're watching us on YouTube. But in the meantime, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.